Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope this finds you in the best shape of Iman and health. Today's reminder serves as a reminder to me first before all of you, and this is my journey with the Quran. I remember it all started in the year 2017, 2018, after we had completed a Friday prayer that sat on one corner of the masjid. I was just reflecting. And then a sister came and asked me to join a halaqa inside the masjid, which I gladly did. And the topic of the halaqa that day was the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how merciful he is to his servants. And one thing that really got my attention was, this, was the speaker. She was around my age. But the way she was speaking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was something beautiful, wallahi. May Allah bless her and preserve her. So as I was listening, I was asking myself, what does it take to have a connection like this? What does it take to talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with so much, with so much mawadda, like this sister? And it happened that the sister who, um, and I, it's, it's like I really needed that particular topic. So the sister who called me to join the halaqa was also moved by the same. And so after the halaqa, we sat together and discussed with the sister speaker of, of, of the halaqa that day. And she was just sharing, and subhanAllah, my friend, who now called me to the halaqa, organized a Quran class for us. So that weekend, she went and looked for madrasas around her place, and we got to join the next weeks, alhamdulillah. So I committed from Rongai to Juja Road thrice a week, and wallahi, it was worth every minute of my life. We joined the madrasa, and my friend was a bit ahead of me. So for me, because I had a lot of mistakes, I had to start from the letters, and I gladly did, alhamdulillah. So the rest is history. I was sitting in the house the other day, and I was reading the Quran, and I got emotional. I could not imagine that it was me who was struggling with the Quran, that I can actually read the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understand at least some few ayahs. And I just remembered one of um, my very close family members. We were in our sitting room, sitting, and we were just chatting. And then he said that, you know what, Sharifa doesn't even know how to read Surah Al-Fatiha. And those words really hurt me. So just looking at where I've come from and where I am today made me, I couldn't put it in words and I just busted out in tears. Uh, so one thing that I've really learned from my journey with my Quran is the importance of consistency. So if you have a target of maybe one page, doing one page every day, or doing half a page every day, or one juice or half a juice every day, you have to be, make it as a part of your routine. So that has to be done irregardless. There's no compromise when it comes to uh, your target of the number of pages that you want to do uh, from the Quran. So consistency really has made it easy because you understand when you're making a mistake, you're able to refer to the uh, to last week's or uh, the other day's um, mistake that you made, and you're able to see it and correct it when you're reading the other page. Like the, the mistakes are always in your mind. And um, one thing that uh, consistency brings about is the, the fact that when you embrace the Quran, the Quran embraces you. Another thing is being patient. Be patient with your Quran. The beauty is in the summary, the beauty is in the struggle. So don't give up. And like my friend puts it beautifully in one of her Facebook posts, that uh, the heart needs to go through stages. So like a withering flower that has not completely died, you, you know, it has to go through stages before it becomes beautiful. So some of us read the Quran, and if it doesn't give us the instant gratification, you, put, uh, you close your mushaf and put it in the shelves, and it starts gathering um, dust. And this is exactly how it works. So for, for the heart to be moist, it has to go through stages, you know for you to actually absorb the beauty and the joy that all, uh, the Quran brings um, about, or the, the joy that comes with the Quran. 
The other thing is making dua when you're struggling and when you're seeing that you're struggling but you're not getting to where you want, make dua to Allah Zawajal, ask him to make it easy for you to have a connection with his book and make it easy for you to understand it and not give up on it. So dua goes a long way in really helping us, just encouraging us that, you know what, I've made dua and I'm sure that Allah will answer my duas. Um, also, I've realized the morning hours are very important when it comes to doing your muraja or hifth, for those people who are doing hifth, because your mind is fresh, fresh at that particular point. So you're able to do as um, probably more pages than if you, you, you would have done it at night. So I'm not a morning person, but I've really struggled and I've seen the benefit of doing my muraja in the morning. And all I don't get me wrong, I'm not a hafida, I'm not close to being a hafida. I still struggle with my tajweed, I still struggle with my maharij, I still struggle. And I love the struggle. I completely love the struggle. Um, the last thing is be a companion to the companions of the book. The friends that you keep around are very important when it comes to your journey with the Quran. Because what is it that you talk about every time you meet? Are you talking about oh, a boyfriend? Are you talking about the latest music? What are you talking about is very important. So being with people who have aspirations like you, and I'm not saying you should dump your friends who are not, um, don't have a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or they listen to music and whatnot, but you should encourage them from how you do your things or from how you uh, struggle with your journey with the Quran. So, wallahi, part of who I am today and part of my journey, I can say, was really and has been impacted by my friends. Because when we meet, I'm able to tell them, this and this is what I'm doing, so what can you do and what can you advise me? And they're able to advise me. And also just talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every time you meet reminds you of your purpose in this life. So, Yes, and music. Allah, music can never go together with Quran. You have to leave it. I loved music, but when I looked at the bigger picture, what is it that I really want about, you know, what, what is it that I really want in my life? If it's the Quran, if it's, uh, you know, memorizing the book of Allah, then I cannot memorize the book of Allah and music. And I know people say that you can do this, or how does music affect me? But as someone who has been there, I can tell you, you cannot memorize music and Quran. One has to go. So inshallah, don't be discouraged. It's okay to struggle. It's okay to stammer. It's okay not to know the Book of Allah, but it's not okay for you to stay there. You have to start your journey. And subhanAllah, I'll leave you with this um, words that I, my friend told me in a recent phone call that we were in. She told me that, you know what, Sharifa, I'm done being an average Muslim. And I asked her, what do you mean by being, you're done being an average Muslim? And she said, I'm done praying five times. I've, I'm done just doing the basic things. I want to go beyond. I want to, uh, you know, emulate the Sahabas and the Sahabiyats. And I reflected on those words and I asked myself, what is it that I do extra as a Muslim? So inshallah, it's never too late for you to start your journey. Remember, like the withered flower, you have to go through stages and for the heart to absorb the moist that you know, the Quran bl brings about, you have to be patient and you have to start your journey. So inshallah may Allah Azawajal make us among the people who love his book, will have a connection with it. May he make it easy for us to memorize and um, inshallah until next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.